Hello, my dear, welcome in. This is the first of a multi-part video series. We're going to discuss natural language processing, and we in particular want to look at several of the key algorithms that contribute to this. Hello and welcome in. I'm Dr. Aliana Moren, and I teach artificial intelligence and natural language processing in Northwestern University's Master of Science in Data Science program. This video kicks off a series in which we want to look at some of the key algorithms in natural language processing. In particular, we want to compare some of the classic algorithms, such as term frequency times inverse document frequency, often known as TF-IDF, versus more recent algorithms, such as word to vec and doc to vec. Similarly, we want to compare classic means for decomposing a corpus into clusters versus some of the newer methods like latent directed allocation for topic mapping. This video presents an overview of the NLP methods that we're going to address in more detail in subsequent vids. Now let's take a look at a high-level block structure of the key components of NLP. Upper left-hand side, we see the pre-processing. That's where you extract the terms from a document. On the far right, we're seeing high-level things involving ontologies and worldview. We're going to totally skip that for a while. Instead, let's go back to that upper left-hand block and take a look at it in more detail. We see that there's two major processes. One is extracting the terms and the entities from the document, and that's pretty straightforward. We're not going to give it a lot of time here. The second area is that we're going to perform word vectorization. Now, this can either be very simple or a bit more complex. Once we've done some vectorization with whatever process we have, we're going to create what I call a reference term vector. That's the vector that we're actually going to use for the next stage processing. There are typically three different things that we can do once we have vectors representing not only the terms that we consider useful and appropriate to describe the entire corpus, but also a vector for each different document. First, we can cluster the documents together. That means each cluster will have documents that are more or less similar to each other. They address the same kind of topic or material. Second, we can do topic mapping. The big difference between topic mapping and clustering is that when we do clustering, one document can participate in only one cluster. But when we have topic mapping, any document can contribute to multiple topics. Third, we can do classification. But to do good classification, we really need to know in advance which class we want to assign certain documents to to have a training set. So typically, we don't do classification until we've done either clustering or topic mapping and we know where we want to assign the different documents. So let's focus in on the topics that we'll address when we deal with word vectorization. We can roughly divide these into two groups. There's the pre-2000 algorithms and there's the post-2000. Pre-2000, our algorithm of choice was term frequency times inverse document frequency, that's TF times IDF. In 2003, though, we had a real breakthrough in word vectorization with the invention of Word2Vec followed by Doc2Vec, and this was done by Mikhailov and his team at Google. Then in 2018, we've had the invention of BERT, bidirectional encoder representations from transformers. In short, the suite of algorithms available to us keeps increasing. We're not going to address them all, just the top few that most need our attention right now. Once we've applied one of these algorithms, whether it's a simple TF-IDF or something more advanced and complicated, the result is for each document we have a vector. And this vector has a list or set of fields where each value describes the strength of a word in that document. Now, just because we have a vector, that doesn't always mean that we're happy with it. Typically, we do a lot of things to that vector. We can uh, trim it in terms of the total number of words used. We can eliminate certain words. We can combine words using something called equivalence classes. We can play with parameters. There's all sorts of options. But we don't really know what we want to do until we've really moved on to the next stage, which is clustering or topic mapping, and found how the uh, vectors describing all the documents in this corpus perform for us. So the final things that we'll discuss 
in this particular vid series will be the things that we can do after we've got our vectors. These will be either clustering or topic mapping. We're going to defer on classification, and the reason is, is that to have good classification, we need classes, and to determine our classes, we typically either want to do clustering or topic mapping first. This sums up our plan for this particular vid series. Our next vid is going to address the TF IDF. This is a very simple method, but we're going to take it in two steps. We'll have two short vids. One's going to go through the math and theory, and the other will take us through some examples. Thank you for joining me. It's been such a pleasure having you with me, and I hope to see you in the next vid. So this concludes our overview section of this multi-part discussion on natural language processing, or NLP, methods. In the next vid, we'll take a look at the simplest of the methods available to us, TFIDF.